There's a... Kazushi. We tend to get locked into our ideas of Kazushi. What's happening in Kazushi? Kazushi is the body moving with the other body. So I got all shown and we're walking along and we're going down the street together. And as I'm walking, he just extends a step through me. Somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> One body affecting another, synergy, gravity, conversion. We can be connected up some light way. That's our energy, baby. You know, like the kids, they make a promise, they make a little pinky promise. So you don't need a whole hell of a lot of connection and center to that version. does that too. So it's not a whole bunch of affect with the arms doing a bunch of stuff. It's the centers and how they move. You can do things that happen. That's Suzumi. Suzumi just means the one body affecting the other body in the whole motion. Cool? Convergent, divergent. Lots of directions. Then there's the other stuff. This is the weird stuff. The stuff that's not your whole body. It's like, oh, I don't know. Here you go, man. Give me. I moved my whole body, but you can get away with it. Okay. Dumb. Ikkyoi is what that's called. And Ikkyoi is when you move just bits and pieces of you to do this thing. And it's not your whole body, it's just done with like, when we make a little adjustment, and I'm just standing still, and he gets a hold of my wrist, and as the wrist changes, his grasping function, as the wrist changes, that little change is an ikioi function. And what the commonality is, and people get confused, they say, man, this counts, and this is good, but that's bad, and this is like, you should do this, not do that, that's muscle, this is, but it all works. Because Kazushi is not just defined by one set of physical parameters, it's an abstract deal. Kazushi is whatever you get him to do that he did not plan to do. <laughs> All right? If you get him to make a move, blink his eye, <laughs> look over there, shoelaces on time. <laughs> if you get him to make an adjustment that they didn't plan to make, that they weren't geared for at the optimal time, and you just use that to establish control, you have extended the concept of Kazushi into the plane that you'd really like to live in. As long as you're trying to be locked into a physical model of it, it's going to make you a little crazy. Okay? So, don't get too confused about Kazushi. Principle of Jew. It behooves me as, uh, as a new okay. case as an ukimi artist, as one who is doing the job of uke, which means, what does uke mean, gang? Okay? To receive energy. <laughs> He's going to transmit energy to me somewhere. And I need to invest in accepting that energy in the body in a smooth, clean, relaxed way. To the best of my ability. I mean, I'm a big old overweight fella. I got 45-year-old guy's knees. My shoulders and neck ain't so hot anymore. I have to live within the parameter of the body I got. But given those parameters, I would like to accept the energy as cleanly and with as little resistance as I can manifest in my body. Why do I want to do that? Because I want as clean a signal, that's, that energy coming at me is a signal. It's a set of information, it's data. And I want the cleanest signal going into my unconscious mind that I can get. I don't want to clutter it up with noise. Information here. You don't want to add noise to the signal. You want a clean signal to get the transmission of information from A to B. He begins to act upon me. There's a physical signal coming. If I'm doing a job of stopping that signal, then I'm acting as uke to some degree, maybe 50%, and 50% is acting as not uke is acting as, I don't know, what the hell you want to call it? Guy that fights. <laughs> guy that doesn't receive signal. Guy that's resistant and doesn't want to fall. Well, you're doing what's intuitive. And it is intuitive. You have to, again, it's a counter-trained response. Right. To accept it and go to pure lightness and just live in the off-balance. And you live in the off-balance a long time. You come out here, people dance with you. 
do these funny things, and whoa, this body gets undulatory. It can be like a dancing bear sometimes. And it's, it, you, you allow that to happen in your frame as Uke, to accept that energy and feel the lines of off-balance clearly. And oddly enough, it imprints. It gets in your subconscious, and one day you turn around and you put your hands on somebody, and they're standing on one foot for you. And you go, why are they doing that? And then they start to get off, and you just do something you're unconscious about, and they're standing on another one foot again. And their bodies get toward you. Go, Damn, that's weird. And you find that what you are feeling inside of your mechanism, back in here, with a clean signal, is now being transmitted. And it's not coming out of your conscious willpower. You cannot do it at will. In fact, when you first stumble into that and you start trying to do it at will, <laughs> it's a big uh, disappointment, isn't it? When you first walk into that world and you start trying to really do it, you know what I mean? There's a few old hands around here that know exactly what I'm talking about. You get, you get a little taste of it and then you go out and try to make it happen. I'm going to get them, I'm going to get them, I'm going to get them. And it's complete failure. It's abject failure. You feel like, I've got to go back all the way to the drawing board. What the hell have I done? It's, it, 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 it happens in Zen all the time when you do a koan. They do this. <laughs> you, you think you got, ah, and pow, rug gets pulled out from under, you start over. Well, what that is, is you cannot apply your sense of at-will timing to the functionality of the unconscious doing its job. Your unconscious mind knows the timing. It has the clear signal, and it can reach out there and play with it. But when your conscious mind, your neocortex, right? We got these different brains in our head. <laughs> the neocortex out here, that's your willpower and your ego and your me, my, me, my, the one that drives you around and says, I'd rather have a coffee latte today instead of a right? And makes all kinds of important decisions and how we drive ourselves around as if we're in control. You know, that one, it's kind of a, a, a magic trick we play on ourselves because they're really not in control but we think we are. That part of ourselves gets involved, tries to make it happen, and it, it just falls to pieces. It's like, Ugh. And you got to learn to let it go and get back into the deeper brain function, into that unconscious mind, and just let it happen. So the principle of Ju and the principle of Kazushi working together in what we call Toshi Rondori becomes a really intricate dance. There's a lot going on, and people have been frustrated for years with it to try to come to fruition. It's very... Um, mm, Frustrating when you just sort of dive in and randomly wade through the material and try to make sense of it yourself. But if you have a few pointers, sometimes it's a, it's a little helpful. And all this material that we've been fooling with all week is nothing but just trying to make a few pointers. Trying to give you a few little, I don't know, how would you describe it, Kitty? It's, a, it's just some stuff. Experiences that will come yeah, I love that. And you want to do them repeatedly. Experiences. A repeatable experience that will help unlock a subconscious function. I love it. Very good. A plus. She's very bright. <laughs> She's very smart. Bunch of real smart folks in here. Bunch of folks that have done a whole bunch of this, and I don't need to lecture you. But it's a, uh, on the off chance it might make a difference.